Welcome to Random Imperialism Episode 2, where our map is going to go from looking like this to looking like this. Alright, let's get started with our first spin. Now it looks like the Saints are going to be our first team up. Let's go ahead and see where they're going to be spinning, or going, attacking. Straight up, and that's going to be hitting the Denver Broncos. So our first matchup is going to be the Saints attacking the Denver Broncos. Let's get into it. And here we go. Denver starts with a 7 nothing lead. And they make it 14 nothing, And they make it 17 nothing at halftime. 24 nothing. Will the Saints get shut out? No, they get three points on the board. Ten points. Are they making a comeback? Oh, wait, 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 wait. They're making a comeback. Hold on. Let's look at this. Let's see. Will the Saints stop them? Oh, they got a first down. The comeback was almost real, but... The Saints have officially lost this game. Let's go ahead and update that map. Or make it official first. There is no possibility. They scored a touchdown to end it. Is that what it looked like? Um, let's see. They did score a touchdown. If the Broncos would not have kicked that field goal, we would have had a tie game going into overtime. But the Saints lost. We're going to go ahead and update this map. And unfortunately... My New Orleans Saints are the first team to go today. All right, and with that win, the Broncos have stolen the Marshawn Lattimore from the Saints. Let's go ahead and get into our second round. And it looks like our second round is going to be the Eagles attacking. Let's see where they're going to go. They're going to be going towards the Browns. So we're going to have the Eagles attacking the Browns next. Let's get into this. Eagles take a 7 nothing lead, and the Browns respond with three points. And now it's 14-10. Wow, seven. This is a high-scoring affair. Right before halftime, it becomes 21-20. The Browns did not get the two-point conversion, though. Let's see. Will the Eagles lock this up with a score? A touchdown. If they get a field goal, it's not locked up yet. And they got a field goal, which means this is a five-point game. The Browns will be getting the ball back. Let's go ahead and hop into this and see what the Browns will do. I skipped a play by accident. Whoops. Uh, that first down play, Deshaun Watson threw an incomplete pass. So it is second and 10 at the 25. I'm under two minutes to go, but they have all three timeouts. A touchdown and a two-point conversion will put them up by three. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Second and 10. Deshaun Watson takes a snap. He sets. He throws to a receiver. Is that Amari Cooper? I do not know the numbers. That is Donovan People jones and the clock is ticking. Let's see if they use hurry up. They do have all three timeouts, so they don't have to rush just yet. They will hurry up from the 40. Tom Watson drops back. He starts to scramble. Using those legs, he gets past the 50 to the 40. A 20, a 22 yard gain there by Deshaun Watson. What a great scramble. The Browns are looking like they could pull off the upset here. Another hurry up down to a minute left on the 38. Fakes the hand off to Nick Chubb. He throws and it's picked off. That'll do it for the Eagles. Someone that I have never seen the name of before got the pick and secures the win for Philadelphia. Well, the Browns actually did end up getting the ball back somehow. I forgot they had all three timeouts. Um, they did not score anything, though. So, same result. 
Eagles win. Will still a player from the Browns. Let's go ahead and get updated. Roster and map. And just like that, the Eagles have acquired Miles Garrett. And here's an updated look at the map with the Eagles taking Indiana. All right, let's spin the wheel. And it looks like the Buccaneers are going to be our next team attacking. Remember, they're in Utah now. They have a lot of teams around them. So let's see where they're going to attack. Straight south. And that is going to put them going against the Raiders. So we're going to have the Buccaneers attacking the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's get into this. Now remember, this is current day free agent rosters. No rookies are in this. So... This is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense without Tom Brady, and this is a Raiders offense without Derek Carr. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Started off with a Tampa Bay Buccaneers touchdown with a Las Vegas Raiders touchdown right behind it. 10 to 6 right now, 17 to 6. Going into halftime. 24 to 9. The Bucks are running away with this one unless the Raiders come back. It's a oh, it's it's over. The Bucks have won, beat the Raiders, and will take over. The Raiders land and steal the player from them. Devontae Adams now joins the stacked receiving core of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. All right, and now the Buccaneers have claimed Arizona. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel again. Looks like the Titans will be attacking next. If I'm not mistaken, they're one of the lucky teams that does not have many teams around them. So hopefully, they might get lucky. Let's, let's look at this map real quick. Yeah, they have three empty states around them and two power-ups around them. So this could be a uh, good spin for the Titans. Let's go ahead and see where they're going. You see, that's the one arrow that I think is going to get them playing somebody. Yep, that is pointing towards the Giants. We're going to have the Titans attacking the Giants. Let's go. Giants take a three-point lead, and the Titans respond with a touchdown. It's 17 to 12 going into halftime. Very weird score. Giants are making the lead larger, 11 points. 18 points. The Giants have run away with this one. It is all over. Titans lose. Giants gain a player and some land with this big win. Let's update the map and the roster. The Giants picked up Kevin Byard. I didn't give him Derrick Henry because they already have Saquon Barkley. I feel like that'd be kind of pointless. So where it fits, we will not give the best player. We will give the best player that will help them the most in this case it was kevin byard the map is now updated the giants claimed south dakota let's go ahead and move on next it looks like we have the steelers let's go ahead and see where they're going to be attacking they have a lot of teams around them Straight up, can they do that? Yes, they can. That is the 49ers. So we're going to have Steelers at 49ers. Let's go. And we have a snow game in California. That's what happens when you press random on the weather. Steelers are used to playing in the cold environment. But the 49ers are not. Let's see if that affects anything. Forty nine ers start out seven nothing. Steelers answer back. It's a tie game at halftime. We have a tie game with just under three minutes to go. Let's go ahead and see what happens play by play. And the Steelers are going to have a chance to win this game with a little bit over two and a half minutes left. They're moving the ball. Kenny Pickett to Deontay Johnson. They are making some moves here. 
go ahead and hop into this action now that it's a two minute warning after this play. All right, here we go. First and 10 from the 44. The Steelers are moving. They could run this clock out. Can you pick a drops back? Throws complete to Fire Muth. All they have to do is get this clock down and kick a field goal, and they will have pulled off the upset. Just under a minute and a half left. Hand off to Najee, who breaks a tackle and gets about six yards. This is where the 49ers are start taking their timeouts. As long as the Steelers don't commit any major mistakes, it looks like they will have this one locked up. Especially with the first down. Same formation. Same play to Najee Harris, who gets the first down and more. All the way up to the 13-yard line. With that and one timeout left from the 49ers, you would have to think they would start trying to maybe kneel this ball out so they don't score too fast. But this is Madden. Not real-life logic. Najee takes the ball again, gets up to the 7, and the final timeout from the 49ers has been called. It's just a matter of kicking the 3, running that clock out. Najee takes the handoff again, gets stopped at the 5. Third and 2, this clock's going to run down. They probably only need to call one more play, and then they can kick the field goal. Najee takes the handoff again, gets the first, down at the one. I wonder if they're going to try to kick a field goal or if they're going to try to score a touchdown now. Take a timeout, just above 30 seconds. First and goal from the one. Handoff to Najee, who is tackled into the end zone. The Steelers take a touchdown lead, giving the 49ers 29 seconds with no timeouts to try and score to tie the game up. All right, here we go. 75 yards in 28 seconds. Can Brock Purdy do it? Drops back. A lot of time he throws, drop down to McCaffrey, who breaks a tackle, surprisingly, and gets almost to the first down, but they stayed in bounds, so this is going to have to be hurry-up time. If they even get that play off under 10 seconds now and they're gonna have a chance just kidding he didn't get the snap off that's the game the Steelers have upset the 49ers who won our first imperialism video let's go ahead and update the roster and the map and with that loss Trent Williams is now a Steeler helping out Kenny Pickett and Najee Harris all right and the Steelers have claimed Wisconsin. Let's go ahead and move on to the next round. The Jaguars have been called upon now. Let's go ahead and see where they're going to go attack. Cannot attack that way because that is the ocean. They can probably attack there. Let's see where that's going to be. Yep, that's going to have them attacking the Jets. So we're going to have the Jaguars at the Jets. The Jaguars take a 7 nothing lead. Jets answer with a field goal. And a touchdown right after the Jaguars score. 14-13. 17-13 going into the fourth quarter. The Jets take a lead here. And the Jaguars score a touchdown back. It is 24-20. With the Jets getting the ball a little bit over two minutes left. Let's go ahead and hop into this game. Jets taking it. Why is Zach Wilson starting? 
I swear Aaron Rodgers is on the Jets. It is one of the things I made sure of before I started this. I guess Zach Wilson made his life a living hell in practice, and he decided not to play. Or maybe he's still in his darkness retreat. Anyway, we're going to leave Zach Wilson as the quarterback, because that's the Jets' decision to make, not mine. And it's 2 minutes 13 seconds, handing it off to Brees Hall. Gets first down. That's going to bring him to the 2-minute warning. Zach Wilson takes the snap. He drops back. He's scrambling. Nobody's open. He throws it to a drop-off receiver. Who gets up to the 39-yard line. What a play. Corey Davis. That'd be hilarious if, in real life, they just put Zach Wilson starting over Aaron Rodgers. That would just be crazy. Anyway, Zach Wilson drops back. He's going to wait and wait, and he's scrambling, and he throws on the run, and it's picked off. And that's the game. Not quite. They do have three timeouts, but that is pretty much the game. We're going to go ahead and see if the, J uh, the Jets can get the ball back. That would have been a Mahomes-worthy highlight reel if that would have been a touchdown. But Shaquille... Griffin just snags it right away from him. And all Trevor Lawrence has to do is get a first down. And this is the game. And the first down was picked up by Travis Etienne Jr., meaning the Jets have lost this game. Hey, you see, the Jets have Aaron Rodgers. I don't understand why Zach Wilson started over Aaron Rodgers. He's clearly there and clearly the better player. I, that, That's on the Jets, man. That, that's not my fault. And the Jaguars now have a new highest overall player in Quinnen Williams. All right, and here's an updated look at the map. Let's go ahead and move on to our next round. The Chargers, playing out of Louisiana, will be attacking now. Let's see where they're going to go. Looks like they're going east, which is going to be our first expansion of the video. They're going to claim Mississippi. All right. Now that the Chargers have claimed Mississippi, let's go ahead and spin again. And the Bengals, which are right next to the Chargers, are up now. Let's see, will they be attacking the Chargers? They will not, I think. That's right. They're going to be claiming the nuke power up. And in Georgia as well. All right, since the Bengals claimed the nuke power up, we're going to spin this wheel right here, which has all remaining teams, including the Bengals. Because you, in this video, you can nuke yourself. The person that has that nuke launch codes just messed up and sent it to the wrong place. So what's going to happen? We're going to spin this wheel. Whoever it lands on, they're going to get nuked, and they're going to get eliminated from the game. But also, the territory they own will become a, a radiation zone, and they cannot – any team that expands into that zone for the next three turns will instantly be eliminated as well. So let's go ahead and see which team is going to get nuked. And it's going to be the Bills, probably one of the best teams remaining on this list. They're going to get nuked, so the entire state of California will become a radiation zone, and any team that expands into it for the next three turns will be eliminated as well. Just for the sake of simplicity, we are not going to have teams dying to nukes be stolen, like... The Bengals are not going to get a player from the Bills because they nuked them. That's just how the power up's going to work. We're going to go ahead and update this map now. So we have updated the map. That X means radiation zone. Any team that attacks into there for the next three turns will be eliminated. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel. Hopefully it doesn't land on the Colts because they will be in trouble if they go there. 
Oh, I can't make that. I thought that was going to land on the Colts. Oh, man. It's the Patriots. All right, let's see where the Patriots are going to go. They're going to be going west, which looks like they're going to be attacking the Broncos. Broncos second time being attacked in this video. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Patriots at Broncos. Broncos take a 7-0 lead. Patriots answer right back and make it 14-7. Broncos drive down and score three points. And right before half, another three. It's 21-13, 21-19. Going into the fourth quarter. It's 31-19. And the Patriots have walked away with this one. 34-26. And the Patriots will take over the Broncos' land and gain a player. The Patriots went ahead and claimed Patrick Sertain from the Broncos. They could have taken Justin Simmons, but they already had two 80 overall safeties at both safety positions. So I figured that they really didn't need J Justin Simmons. So instead, they got Patrick Sertain. All right. And now the Patriots have claimed West Virginia and Ohio. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel again. And the Seahawks just barely get called off on here. Let's see where they're going to go. Let's see, is that an open state? I think they're going to go ahead and claim Oklahoma with that spin and the 99 overall power up. Yep, that is going to hit the tip of Oklahoma. It looks like their best player is Tyler Lockett, so he will become a 99 overall fully maxed out player. Tyler Lockett is now a 99 maxed out overall player. And here's a look at the map. Seahawks gained Oklahoma. Let's go ahead and move on. This will be the last spin, the last turn before the quarantine radiation of the nuke is eliminated and the teams around that have escaped because the Vikings are going to be called upon here. Let's see what they're going to attack to. Looks like straight down and that's going to be the Panthers. We're going to have the Vikings attacking the Panthers. Let's get into this. First score comes from the Vikings in the second quarter, and it is going to be 7-6 to six at halftime. A very low-scoring game. Panthers go ahead and take a 14. Now it's tied. 21-14. 21-21-28. Matt Corral is the Panthers quarterback in this, and they just got a 75-yard passing touchdown. Now, under two minutes left, the Vikings have to score a touchdown to tie the game. The Vikings are down to the f their own 15. It's not looking good for them. Second and 20. Kirk Cousins steps back, takes the snap. He is going too far back. Is that a safety? A safety by the Carolina Panthers, and I think that just about locks it up. All right. Let's see, can the Vikings come back? Oh, wait, I forgot. When you get a safety, you don't get the ball back. This game's over. I don't even need to do this. Let's go ahead and get to the end of the game. Now, the Vikings, every time I do that, the, the the team that I think is lost somehow gets the ball back and makes it close. The Vikings made it a two-point game. Anyway, Panthers still won. The Panthers will be stealing a player from the Vikings and their land. Panthers now have Justin Jefferson to go along with Adam Thielen, DJ Chart, and LaVisca Sinault. I don't know why Matt Corral was playing as a starter either. It should have been Andy Dalton. Um, 
Madden being Madden, it looks like. Anyway, let's go ahead and update the map. And just like that, the Panthers have claimed Missouri. And the radiation zone in California has gone away. Let's go ahead and get into our next spin. 23 teams remaining. Let's see if one will get eliminated on the spin. It looks like it's going to be the Jaguars. Will they expand or will they fight? Let's find out. And that's going up north. Let's see where that's going to hit. That looks like... Let's see. We could either say they will be expanding here or uh, that would hit the Rams. Let's, let's find out. Let's see. Um... I think we're going to have to give them the expansion right here. Connecticut. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right. And now the Jaguars own Connecticut as well. Let's move on to the next round. And we're going to get the commanders for the first time in this video i think they can only expand right now so do we even need to spin this wheel i think the only thing they can do is claim vermont right here so we're just gonna let them take that i'm, I'm not even gonna spin the wheel because i mean that's the only state they're touching so let's go ahead and get that updated and after back-to-back -back expansions here's what the map looks like let's go ahead and spin again Now we're going to have the Rams, which is right next to the Commanders. Let's see if they could expand potentially or fight either the Jaguars or the Commanders. Depending on where this arrow lands. And I can't believe it, but I think that is going to be an expansion. Yep, they're going straight down south to Massachusetts. All right, let's spin again. The Rams again, I think, unless they get a very lucky arrow spin, they have to play this time. Let's see. Yep, that arrow is going to point them in the direction of the Jaguars territory in New York. So we're going to have the Rams attacking the Jaguars. Let's get into it. All right, the wonder of this game is going to significantly significantly increase their land size so let's see who it's going to win rams get on the board first but the jaguars score right back it's 14-7 at the end of the first quarter rams are gonna have to get tied up by the jaguars and it's 21-14 now 21-17 the jaguars need a score and they do but they m miss they kick a field goal okay so they're down one they're using up their timeouts now. And if they can get a stop here on the Rams, they'll have a chance to win the game. Let's see what happens. And it looks like they're not going to get that chance because Kyron Williams got the first down for the Rams. And I don't think the Jaguars will have a chance now. Especially with that first down. It looks like the Rams have won this game. With Matthew Stafford taking a knee. That is going to be the end of this. The Rams are going to take over the Jaguars land and steal a player from the Jaguars. So let's go ahead and get that updated now. And with that win, the Rams are going to take Quinnen Williams from the Jaguars, who was already stolen from the Jets, to beef up their defensive line along with Aaron Donald. So let's go ahead and update the map now. All right, and now the Rams have claimed all of the Jaguars' territory. Let's go ahead and move on to the next round. It looks like we're going to have... It was close to the Lions, but it's going to be the Cardinals. Let's see where they're going to go. Let's see where that arrow takes them. That is straight into the Steelers' territories. So we're going to have the Cardinals attacking the Steelers. Let's go. 
Steelers get the ball first, do not do anything with it, but they score on their next drive. 7 nothing into the first quarter. It's now 14 nothing. Cardinals need an answer, and they do with a touchdown. 14-7 at halftime, and they tie it up at 14. Going into the first, fourth quarter, it's 21-14. And the Cardinals tie it up, and it's the two-minute warning is coming. Let's go ahead and start slowing this game down a little bit and seeing what's going to happen with the Steelers' next drive. Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually the Cardinals that have the ball. The Cardinals can go ahead and take a lead here. Oh, no. Just like that, it's fourth down. I think the Cardinals are going to have to punt here. Yep, this is giving the Steelers a chance. We're going to go ahead and hop into this game now, and we're going to see what happens. All right, it looks like the Steelers are down on their two-yard lines. So they have a 98 yards to go. And a handoff of Najee Harris first. They're going to have to get moving because they have all timeouts, but they have to go a very long distance, so they might not want to use them up right now. We might be seeing an overtime game here. Here they go. They do take the hurry up option. Can he pick it? Snaps. And he throws a screen to Najee Harris, who gets a lot of yards and does get out of bounds. Kenny Pickett takes the snap. He's throwing it down the middle of the field to Fryermuth. They're moving the ball pretty good. We might not have an overtime game here. They might get in the field goal range. They don't want to score too fast, though, and give the Cardinals a chance. Yeah, they're going hurry up again. 45 seconds. Kenny Pickett throws... Complete, and he breaks the tackle. I think that's George Pickens. They probably should, yep. I was about to say they should probably start using the timeout, and they went ahead and did with 30 seconds left. They're at midfield about. They probably need another 15, 20 yards to get in the field goal range. Let's see what they can do. Looks like it's going to be a run. Najee, and he's going to take a big loss. That's not what you want to do at this part of the field, this part of the game. I don't know why they decided to run that there. Play action, fake to Najee. Throw in, and it's picked off. Buda Baker gets the pick. And the Cardinals now have a chance to drive down the field with 19 seconds left and kick this game-winning field goal. Buda Baker had, her, had him covered the entire time. See what Kyler Murray can do. All right, here we go. Kyler Murray needs to get them into field goal range, and he hands it off. Not really sure. I guess they're playing for overtime. Second and inches. 14 seconds left. Kyler Murray should probably throw this ball. And he will. Oh, he's going to get sacked. Yep. The chances of an overtime game are getting very high now. I don't think they're going to try anything here. Kyler Murray drops back. He's scrambling. Not what you want to be doing. He makes a man miss. They take a timeout, and they won't. Wow, that was anticlimactic, but we're going into overtime. All right, let's see what the Cardinals are doing overtime. Well, Murray throws down the middle of the field and gets a completion. We're going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit because we're going to have to get through both the Cardinals and... The Steelers drives. All 
Oh, it looks like Kyler Murray is stalling out. Three incomplete passes in a row. I think that means they're going to have to punt. Which they do. All the Steelers need is to score some points. And they will have this win. And it looks like they're going to get very close to field goal range with that pass there. Things are looking good for the Steelers here. And just like that, they are in field goal range. Let's see if they will be kicking their field goal now or not. Steelers are not going to be kicking a field goal just yet, but it looks like they're going to give a handoff to Najee Harris. They might just be trying to get closer. Can he pick a pass? As, and he scrambles and he gets sacked. But Buda Baker. I'm not sure what the Steelers are doing here. All they have to do is kick a field goal to win this game. Third down. Can he pick it? Is going to throw the ball. And he incompletes it. Looks like they will be attempting their field goal now. I would hope. And they are punting the ball. Are you serious? They must not have a good enough kicker. And it looks like they're going to down the Cardinals at the three-yard line. So now all the Cardinals need is some points. Go ahead and see. We're going to speed up this game again. Because I thought that would be the end of the game. But it's not. Looks like they are slowly moving this ball up the field. Just in that, it looks like they're in field goal range. Go ahead and hop in and see if they will end this game now. And it looks like the Cardinals are taking another timeout and they're going to try to kick a field goal on this play with two seconds left. And they're going for the field goal. What will be the final play of the game if they make it? The snap. The kick. It's good. The Cardinals have pulled up the upset. They're going to take all of the Steelers' land. And they will steal a player from the Steelers. Steal. Steelers. Let's go ahead and get all that updated. And with that win, the Cardinals will take Trent Williams, who is starting to be passed around. Like crazy. Let's go ahead and update the map. All right, and now the Cardinals have taken the Steelers' territory. Let's go ahead and move on to the next spin. And looks like we're going to have the Colts playing now. I think this might be their first time playing. They're getting called upon because they could expand. Let's see where they're going to go. That might be an expansion. Let's see. Yep, they're going to expand the Bills' old territory in California, which was nuked by the Bengals. Let's go ahead and get that updated. All right, let's spin that wheel again. And it looks like the Rams are going to get called on again. Go ahead and see where they're going to go this time. Do we say that that is the Commanders? I think. We base the arrow off of the logo. I mean, technically their logo would be right here. Since the state was so small, it had to be out here. But I think if we draw the line from that, it does touch the commander's territory. So we're going to have the Rams attacking the commanders here. Go ahead and see who's going to win this battle for all of this Northeast territory. All right, we're hopping in. Who's going to score first? Doesn't look like anyone has going to score in the first quarter, but the commanders are going to get a touchdown. Rams will respond back with a field goal. We're going in the halftime 7 to 3. Commanders make it 14 to 3. Make it 21 to 3. 21 to 10. And it looks like it was never really a contest. The Commanders have taken care of the Rams and will steal a player from them. 
I think we all know who it's gonna be, but let's go ahead and get that officially done. Like I had said, there is no question who is gonna get moved over. It's Aaron Donald. So let's get that, that map updated. All right, and now the commanders probably own one of the largest areas of land in this entire competition, but let's move on. Spinning again, let's see who we're gonna get. Maybe the Packers? Yep, it looks like it's going to be the Packers who have not been called upon yet. Let's see where they're gonna go. And that is hitting the Commanders, so for the second straight match, the Commanders will be defending. Let's see what's gonna happen when the Packers travel to the Commanders. All right, let's get into this game. Like the commanders get the ball first and score a touchdown. Packers respond right back 7 7. Now it's 14 7, and the Packers respond right back. At the end of the halftime, Packers make it 35 14 out of nowhere. Oh my goodness. 35 17 going into the fourth quarter. It's now 38 17. I don't think there's a chance for the commanders to come back, and the Packers are going to take all of the commanders' land. And I think Aaron Donald's one-game stint in the Washington is up because I think they're going to be taking him over to the Packers. Let's go ahead and move on. And Aaron Donald will now be playing for the Packers. Let's go ahead and update the map. All right, now the Packers own all of the Northeast, essentially. Let's go ahead and move on. And we're going to have the Packers playing again. This wheel has not been liking to choose other players or other teams. Let's see where they're going to go. Can they even go that way? Yep, that is going to be the Packers taking on the Patriots. So a lot of land is at stake here. Packers at Patriots. Let's go. Looks like a scoreless first quarter, but at the end, the Patriots get a touchdown. Packers score right back. Patriots make it 10 to 7. At the end of halftime, it's 13, 10, 13 to 10. Packers go ahead and get the lead with a touchdown, 17. Now it's 20 to 13. All right, we're getting kind of close. We're going to start slowing this down a little bit. Looks like the Packers are in the driver's seat here. They might be able to take this from the Patriots. Three minutes left. The pa Patriots do get the ball back. Only down a touchdown. Not with incomplete passes. They're not going to go ahead and get that. They're going to have to punt that back. It's looking good for the Packers now. Especially under two minutes, the Patriots are going to start using their timeouts. And the Packers get the first down, sealing the deal. And Aaron Jones knocks it off and s closes the door on the Patriots with a 29-yard touchdown rush. That's the game. Packers are going to take all the Patriots' land. Let's go ahead and make sure nothing crazy happens by simming to the end of this game because I've seen things happen in the series just like that the Patriots make it a touchdown game but nonetheless the Packers still win and we're going to go ahead and update all of this rosters and map joining Jair Alexander in their secondary is Patrick Sertain which we have taken from the Patriots all right and the Packers now own territory from Maine all the way down to Virginia Let's go ahead and spin this wheel again. Looks like we're going to have the Bengals being landed on. Let's see where they're going to go. I think they have a few open territories around them. And that might not be one. Oh, that is. They're going to take Tennessee here. Let's update the map. All right. Spin again.
Looks like we're going to have the Ravens. I think this is their first time being landed on. Let's see where they're going to go. Right, and let's see. Can they even do anything with that arrow? Yep. They're going to be taking on the Packers, who have been active a lot recently. Ravens at Packers. Let's go. All right, let's get into this game. Ravens start off with the ball, and they do a, a touchdown on the first drive. Packers get three points. Ravens also get three. It's tied 10-10. Going into halftime, the Packers make it 17-10. 24-10 now by the Packers. 31-10. It's almost all but over for the, oh, the Ravens. 34-41. The Packers are making easy work of anyone that comes in their path they're going to be taking another player and we're going to have an interesting choice here do we give them lamar jackson to make them even stronger or do we just give them i think the highest rated player is mark andrews let's go ahead and see i decided to give the packers mark andrews because their next highest tight end was mercedes lewis and slowly but surely the packers are becoming the force to beat here um Three players over 95. Let's go ahead and get that. We uh, bleh, 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 bleh. let's go ahead and get that map updated. And the map has been updated. The Packers taking more and more land here. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel again. The Dolphins for the first time, unless they get a very unlucky spin, I think they're just going to be expanding. Oh, I don't think they can do anything with that spin. No, well, that's the unlucky spin they didn't want. They're going to be taking on the Packers, which seems like every matchup now is becoming the Packers. Dolphins at Packers. Let's go. Let's get into this game. Packers started off. Well, the Miami Dolphins get seven points, and the Packers score right back. It's 17 to seven. This Packers offense is just so quick. It's already 24-14 at the end of the half, and it's now 21-24, 31-21. And the Dolphins are down three points, have the ball, and they're almost in the end zone. We're gonna start slowing this game down. They're almost there on the five yard line. And they get the touchdown. For well, the extra point, it's going to be a four point game, making the Green Bay Packers need a touchdown. Let's start simulating this drive and see. We're still kind of far into the game to be jumping into the action yet, but. Packers need to move a little quickly, but not too quickly. There is a lot of time left. If they score too quick, the Dolphins could have a chance. It's fourth and inches on the 45. Jordan Love barely misses the first down. Let's see. Will they go for it? And they did go for it. They got the first down, and they are now in field goal range. But a field goal will not do anything for them. Second down and five. Let's go ahead and hop into this game now. All right, here we go. Packers on the 25-yard line. Takes the handoff, and he throws it. It's picked off by the Miami Dolphins. That's going to seal the deal. Xavier Howard just took a massive chunk of land from the Packers with that pick. I'm glad we hopped into this game when we did. That is going to be it. Tyree Kill, three touchdowns on the day. With 40 seconds left, technically, the Packers still have three timeouts. So, let's go ahead and see if they can make the stop. The Packers do get a stop.
and they have to punt. They technically still have a chance. Let's go ahead and hop back into this. 27 seconds left. They need 46 yards and a touchdown. I might have eaten my words about the Dolphins sealing the deal here. This is not over yet. Chances are slim, but it's not over until it's over. Jordan Love takes the snap. He throws incomplete. Second and 10, 22 seconds. Jordan Love throws it. It's completed, but they're going to have to hurry up. No timeouts. You need to try to be throwing out of bounds here. They might only have time for one more play. If they even get that off, two seconds. They're not going to get the ball off. It's over. Miami wins it. In a huge upset. The Packers go down. And all the stolen talent on the Packers is going to go to waste because the Dolphins are going to take Aaron Donald. No question about it. He's probably the best defensive player in the game. And let's go ahead and update the map. And after the long ordeal of tracing the entire region that the Dolphins just stole, we're going to move on. I surely thought the Dolphins were going to be a one-and-done team here, but they have proved me wrong, and they have eliminated the favorite so far. It's been again. And we're going to have the Falcons playing now. Let's see where they're going to go. Falcons, let's see. That could either touch the Lions territory or the Giants. Let's see where this arrow is actually pointing to. I think that touches. That is more in the direction of the Giants territory. So we're going to have the Falcons taking on the Giants. Let's go ahead and get into this contest. Giants get a 7 to nothing lead here at the beginning of the first quarter, but the Falcons bounce back, and also the Giants, it's 14-7, it's 14-14. Giants make a 17-14 before the end of the half. 17-17 tie game. 20-17. 20-20. The Falcons tie it up. A minute and a half left. It looks like the Giants now have a chance to do something. Let's go ahead and hop into this match. It's already third and three, though. Let's see what the Giants can do. Tie the clock is ticking, too. Under a minute and a half to go. Third and three on their own 46. They're going to have to get all the way into field goal range. Clock's already down to 50 seconds. For uh, 40 seconds now. Giants are going to have to make a move. Daniel Jones throws a quick pass at the tight end. And they get all the way down to the 40 on the other side of the 50. That was confusing to say. And probably more confusing for y'all to hear. But we have 31 seconds. They're getting close to field goal range. The Giants could win this with a field goal. All they have to really do now is get a few more yards and run out the clock. And it looks like they are lining up to run, possibly. Hand off to Saquon Barkley, who barely gets any yards. Timeout by the Giants. Here we go. Second and eight. Another hand off to Saquon Barkley, who's going to get a lot of yards here. I think that solidifies them in the field goal range, and they're going to show that by not taking a timeout until... Probably about seven seconds. Or less. They're not going to take a timeout. Are you kidding? Oh my god, they didn't take a timeout. What was... They're going to overtime. The CPU was so dumb in this game. Oh my goodness. All they had to do was kick a field goal, and they would have won the game. But instead, we're going to overtime. So we're going to speed this up a little bit. We're going to go play-by-play play here. I 
after two negative two yard rushes by Cordero Patterson. It's third and 14. And a 15 yard reception by Drake London is going to make it a first down. Kyle Pitts, nine yard reception. Looks like they're inching their way up there. They would like. Well, this is awkward, but. Let me go get some batteries for my controller. All right, and we are back with a controller that has batteries. Third and one. Falcons are trying to make a touchdown drive in overtime. Let's see what they're going to do on this play. They got the first down. Their drive stays alive. And a 32-yard interception by Darnay Holmes. I'm sorry we were not watching the gameplay for that. But... It's looking like the Giants are just going to need to get in the field goal range, kick a field goal to win this game. As we've seen in the past, some teams do not do that because they the CPU is stupid. But let's go ahead and jump in and see what they do. All right, the Giants are on their own 42-yard line. And they're handing the ball off to Saquon Barkley, who tries to do a spin move right into the offensive lineman. Here they go again. Second and nine. Fake to Saquon this time. Pass to the midfield, and it is caught. Daniel Jones back to take another snap. Another throw in down the middle of the field to an open receiver. Who is number three? Sterling Shepard. They are in field goal range now. All they need to do is kick a field goal to win this game. Now, if they're going to do this, who knows? But... If I was playing the game, I would be kicking a field goal at this point. Because we've seen in the past that if you try to make something happen when you just need a field goal to win, things can go terribly wrong. They're handing the ball off to Saquon. It gets them inside of the 20. I think they're going to try to run the clock down. And then kick their field goal. All right. Daniel Jones takes a snap. He throws it to the middle of the field again. Who is complete? Darius Slayton. Now, I'm stupid at Sterling Shepard. Sorry, everyone. And now they're inside the 10-yard line, I would think. Now would be the time to kick your field goal. But they're not. They're going to try to get that touchdown to win the game. Another pass complete inside of the five now. And they're taking their timeouts. I really just do not understand the CPU in this game. Probably can expect a handoff to Saquon Barkley here. And that's what it will be. And he's going to get in. Nope, he's down at the one. Okay, but it is first and goal now. What a beautiful view of the field goal post. Wow. First and goal from the one. 30 seconds in overtime left. It's a pitch to Saquon. Breaks one tackle. Breaks two tackles. And he gets in. The Giants have won this game. And will take the Falcons territory. The Giants already had Kevin Byard from the Titans. So. We're going to give them Chris Lindstrom. Instead of Jesse Bates. As the best. The highest overall player from the Falcons. Alright. And now the Giants. Have claimed Wyoming. And it looks like out of our remaining teams, five have not played a game or expanded yet. So let's go ahead and spin that wheel again. Now it looks like we're going to get the Seahawks playing out of Texas. Let's see where they're going to go to. I don't think they can go that way. That is south into the Gulf. They can go that way, however. That is going to be... Let's see, they have three potential teams here that that could hit. If we take this arrow... I think we're going to go ahead and say... That is the Chiefs. Because this is going northwest... 
and Northwest is the Chiefs. So we're going to have the Seahawks attack. We're going to have the Seahawks attacking the Chiefs. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get into it. Seahawks start with a 7 0, 14 0 lead. 17 0 on the Chiefs. The Chiefs finally score, but it's 24 7. Chiefs are coming back. By halftime, it is 24 to 20. Chiefs are now 27 24. Seahawks go back on top. And the Chiefs take another lead here. Let's see. We're going to slow this game down a little bit. This is getting intense. Seahawks on their own f on the Chiefs 40. Just under three minutes. They're down by three points. Let's see what happens. And they kicked a field goal to make it a 34-point game. Tied at 34. I'm sorry, that was confusing as well. I do not know how to talk. Two minutes, 47 seconds left. The Chiefs are going to get the ball back. And it looks like they're making quick work. Under the two-minute warning now. Go ahead and hop in and see what's going to happen here. Mahomes and the Chiefs. Let's see what they can do. Handing it off to Pacheco. I don't know if I said his name right. It's third and eight. If they don't convert this, the Seahawks will have a chance to rebuttal if they kick the field goal. Seems like they're doing a little bit of hurry up. Patrick Mahomes hands it off again. They're not going to get the first down. So I hope, I'm wondering if that means the field goal team is going to come out. And fourth and three, it does look like Harrison Butker and the field goal unit will be out to try to take a three-point lead over the Seahawks. And it's up. It's good. Seahawks will have a minute and 20 seconds, roughly, to get some points to either tie it or to win this game. Here we go, Geno Smith and the Seahawks. Two timeouts. Geno Smith throws it down the middle of the field. It is completed. And they do. Hurry up. One minute. Under one minute. Geno Smith takes the snap. He starts to scramble. Instantly scrambles out. He's running. He slides. After an eight-yard game. Looks like they will probably be playing for the field goal here. To send it to overtime. Just at 30 seconds left. Uh, oh, that was an incomplete pass. Third and two. They need to get this first down. They are not in field goal range yet. Geno Smith drop backs. He starts to scramble. He throws a drop uh, check down, which is complete. They are now at midfield with less than 25 seconds left. Starting to not look good. They're going to have to get a big chunk of yardage here to be able to get in the field goal range. Geno Smith drops back. He throws it away. Second and 10. Geno Smith drops back. It's a blitz. He throws it. It's com incomplete. Wow. I thought I thought he had caught that. Third and ten. Seahawks hopes are slowly fading away. They're in the Hail Mary formation now. Just kidding. They're not throwing a Hail Mary, but Geno Smith is scrambling. He throws. That's a penalty. He threw it past the line of scrimmage, and I think that is going to end up being the nail in the coffin there. I think they lose their downs. Yes, they do. Fourth and 15. Wait, 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 wait. Why did the Chiefs not take that? The Chiefs did not accept the penalty, so now it is fourth and one. And they are in field goal range. 
I'm telling you, this this the CPU is just something else, man. Now the Seahawks are gonna get iced, and if they make the field goal, we're going to overtime. If they miss it, the game is over. Here we go. Snap the kick. He missed it. The Seahawks missed it. The Chiefs are trying to return it, but that's the game. That kick was nowhere near the uprights. And just like that, the Chiefs have taken all of the Seahawks' land and will take a player from the Seahawks. Let's get all that updated. With that win, the Chiefs add another 99 overall to their team with Tyler Lockett, who was a maxed out 99 overall earlier in the video. Chiefs now own all of Oklahoma and Texas. Let's go ahead and spin that wheel again. It looks like we're going to have the Giants again. Let's go ahead and see where they're going to be going to. That might be an expansion. And it will be. They're going to take North Dakota. Let's get this map updated real quick. All right, with 14 teams remaining, go ahead and comment down below who you think is going to win this all. We still have three teams that have not taken the field or expanded yet. That is the Texans, the Lions, and the Bears, and the Cowboys. I'm sorry, that's four. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel again. And we're going to have the Chargers... Playing out of Louisiana. Let's see where they're going to go. And I think that's going straight into the Chiefs territory. And yes, it is. We're going to have the Chargers attacking the Chiefs. Let's go. Chargers start with the ball and get a field goal. It's 3 0. 10 0 now. But the Chiefs answer back with a field goal. It is 10 3. Going into halftime, it's 13 3. Chargers have the lead. 16 to 3 now. 16 to 6. 23 to 6. I think the Chargers are going to pull away with this one. Oh, wow. That was very close at the end, but the Chargers did get the win. 23 to 20. All the land that Chiefs just gained are going to get is going to get lost to the Chargers. Let's go ahead and update the map and the wheel. Not the wheel, the rosters. And eventually the wheel too. I don't know how to talk today, everyone, but bear with me. With that upset, the Chargers go ahead and steal Travis Kelsey from the Chiefs. And I know, could have stolen Mahomes or the 99 overall Tyler Lockett, but hear me out. They have Justin Herbert. I don't think they really need Mahomes. I mean, Justin Herbert's nowhere near Mahomes, but he is not a bad option. And as wide receiver, they have Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. I think Travis Kelsey was the better fit here, and he was their highest overall. So that's who we're going to give the Chargers. A lot of upsets have been happening today, and that was just another one right there with the Chargers beating the Chiefs. Let's go ahead and move on to the next round. And we're going to have the Bengals getting called upon again. Let's see where they're going to go. I don't think they can go south. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. They can take Florida. Another expansion for the Bengals, who have still not played a game yet. Let's get this map updated. Spin again. It looks like we're going to have the Eagles landed on this time, playing out of Michigan. Let's see where they're going to go. Um, I think we're going to have to respin that. That's a better spin. And let's see. We follow that arrow. I think that will eventually touch the Cardinals land before hitting Kentucky. So we're going to have the Eagles taking on the Cardinals. Cardinals started off with a 7 nothing lead. The Eagles answer right back. It is tied 7-7 seven to seven at... End of the first quarter. Now it's 10 to 10, 17 to 10, 20 to 10, 20 to 17 at the end of half, 
27-17. Cardinals make it a 7-point game, but the Eagles make it a 13-point game back. And the Cardinals just score two touchdowns back-to-back, -back, it looks like. It is now 34-30 to with just over two minutes left. And we're going to go ahead and slow this game down a little bit. The Eagles, we're going to hop in. The Eagles need to score some points here to win the game. Just under the two-minute warning, they're down by one point. That two-point conversion would have made a load of a difference here now. Jalen Hurts scrambles. He fumbles the ball. The Cardinals get it back. Oh, no. All the Cardinals have to do now is get a first down, and they will have secured another upset. What a turn of events. The Cardinals were down by two touchdowns nearly. And now they're in the driver's seats to win this game. Second and three. All they need is one first down. And that'll steal the deal. Another handoff. And they get the first. That is game over. The Eagles have lost and will be eliminated from this, this video. Let's go ahead and make sure nothing crazy happens. And nothing did. The Eagles have lost. And the Cardinals take none other than the 99 overall Miles Garrett. A huge addition to their defensive line, who was all in the 60s or below overall. All right, and here's a look at the final 12 teams remaining. We have some teams that have not made an appearance yet, like the Texans, the Cowboys, and the Bears. But let's go ahead and see who our next spin's going to be. It looks like one of those teams it's going to be called upon. It's going to be the Bears. I think their only options are to be um, attacking a place. And they're going to go south, east, kind of. Which is going to pin them up against the Bear. The I am so sorry. It's going to pin them up against the Chargers. So we have the Bears attacking the Chargers. Let's go. Please excuse my dog's squeaky toy, but here we go. The Bears start with the ball and don't score, but the Chargers come back and score a touchdown. And the Bears tie it right back up. 14 to 7 now. 10 to 14. The Bears are staying in this. They're actually taking the lead right now. 17 14, but the Chargers take it right back. It's 21 to 20. It's 24 to 20 with two minutes left. Let's go ahead and see what's going to happen. The Bears are going to have a, have a game-winning drive. Oh, and the Chargers actually have the ball. With the t It's not looking good for the Bears. Yeah, it looks like the Chargers are about to score a touchdown. The Bears are out of timeouts. It's fourth and goal, though. And they kick the field goal. So with no timeouts and a minute and a half left, the Bears are going to have a chance to win this game, or tie this game up. Let's go ahead and hop into the action. Justin Fields steps back. It looks like five wide. Second and ten. He scrambles and he throws a check down. With no timeouts left, that's not going to work. It's third and ten. He did not gain a single yard on that. Third down. He throws, and it's picked off by Derwin James. That's going to be the game. Is that Derwin James? No, that was J.C. Jackson. My bad. I saw the ability light up, and I thought that was Derwin James. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the game. The Chargers are going to beat the Bears. Let's get that map and that roster updated. DJ Moore is now a charger. He was not their best overall player, but their best overall player was Tremaine Edmonds, and it was only a one overall upgrade from their current middle linebacker, so I just decided to give them DJ Moore. And here's an update to look at the map with the Chargers taking over Kansas. Let's get to the next spin.
And it looks like the Cardinals are going to get called upon this time. Let's see where they're going to go. And that is a direct arrow over to the Miami Dolphins territory. So we're going to have the Cardinals attacking the Dolphins. Let's go. All right. It's a scoreless game in the first two minutes, but the Cardinals take a three-point lead to end off the first quarter. But the Dolphins tie it back up. It's 3-3. Three to three. Now it's 10-3 to three. going into halftime. It's 13-3. to three. Not a high-scoring game, and now it's 13-10. 20 to 10. And with a minute and a half left, the Dolphins are down 10. I don't think this is possible. Or very plausible. It's still possible. Let's see what they can do on this drive. They are moving the ball. This might actually be something they can do. The time is running out, though. 45 seconds. It's third and 10. And it looks like they're going to have to kick a field goal here. Which they do. Oh no, it was blocked! I kind of wish we were able to watch that one. I'm sorry, that's my fault. Anyway, I think that ends the Dolphins' chances. And that's going to be it. So the Dolphins have been defeated. And will lose all their territory to the Cardinals. Let's go ahead and update the map and the rosters. And the Cardinals went ahead and took Tyree Kill. I know they have Aaron Donald. But the Cardinals also already have Miles Garrett. So they don't really need Aaron Donald as well. So I gave them Tyree Kill. Alright, here's an updated look at the map. Ignore my GeForce Game Ready Driver being available to install. Let's get moved on. It looks like the Lions are going to be called upon next. Let's see where they're going. And that's straight into the Giants' territory. So we're going to have the Lions attacking the Giants. Let's go. The Giants start with the ball. 7-3 now in the second quarter. It's 6-7, 14-6, 21-6. Giants looking to run away with this one. Been scoreless for a while. 28 to 6. Yep. The Giants handled the Lions with ease. Holding them to only two field goals. 28 to 6. Let's update this map. The Giants went ahead and stole Frank Ragnow from the Lions. Here's an updated look at the map. Only nine teams remaining. Let's see who's going to be next. It looks like the Giants are going to be playing again, but this time they're going to be attacking. Let's go ahead and see where they're going to go. And that, if we look at this arrow more closely, I think they're going to be playing the Colts. Let's see. Or do they touch this trade power up first, potentially? Let's look at that one more time. You know what? I think they're going to actually hit Oregon and take that trade power up first. Let's go ahead and get that updated. Here's an updated look at the map with the Giants taking Oregon. Now, the way this power up is going to work is we're going to spin a wheel with all the remaining teams, excluding the Giants. Whichever team it lands on, the Giants are going to trade their best player for the other team's best player. So this could work out in their favor, but this could also hurt them if they land on a team like the Texans. Let's see what happens. And they're going to be trading with the Cardinals, who have been racking up some very good players. So this might actually be a good steal for them. Let's go ahead and see who they're going to get. So the Cardinals' best player was Miles Garrett. So this actually benefited the Giants because they got a 99 overall off the deal. But the Cardinals didn't suffer too badly because they were able to get Dexter Lawrence. So 
they're both on the defensive line. This kind of was a balanced trade here. I would say both teams did not suffer too badly from this trade. Let's go on to the next round. Let's see who's going to get called upon next. And it's looking like it's going to be the Cardinals. So Dexter Lawrence is going to be able to get some action in his new uniform. Let's see where he's going to be going. I don't know if they can go straight up. Oh, well, yes, they can. And that is a power-up. Let's go ahead and update the map, and I'll explain how this power-up works. All right, so now that the Cardinals have claimed this land, the way this power-up, the fortified power-up, is going to work, if the Cardinals play their next match and they lose by less than 10 points, so they either win or they lose from anywhere from one by one point to nine points, they will lose the fortified power up but keep their land if they lose by 10 or more points they lose the power up and they lose their land so this is kind of like a second line of defense here that's how this power is going to work let's go ahead and see what's going to happen on the next round it looks like we're gonna have the giants again A lot of the same teams getting called upon in a row. Let's see where they're going to go. And it looks like we're going to get a chance to see that fortified power up on display because the Giants are going to be attacking the Cardinals. These two teams just had a trade go on with Miles My Garrett and Dexter Lawrence. So let's see what's going to happen. Giants take a 7 nothing lead. Now it's 10 nothing. Cardinals respond right back 10 to 7. 17 to 7. 24 to 7. 31 to 7. It looks like the Cardinals are going to lose 31 to 13, which means they lose their fortified power up and they lose their land because they lost by more than 10 points. So the Giants are going to claim a huge chunk of territory, basically owning the entire north. Of the United States. Let's go ahead and get that map and that roster updated. And just like that, the Giants stole Tyree Kill from the Cardinals. They could have taken Trent Williams, but they already had Andrew Thomas at that position, so I figured this would benefit them the most. And just when I thought the Cardinals were going to be the team to beat, the Giants went and took them right out, easily taking the most territory in the entire competition so far. Let's go ahead and move on. Looks like our next team is going to be the Panthers. Let's see where they're going to be attacking. And it looks like the Giants are going to be in another match because the Panthers are going to be attacking the Giants. Let's go. All right, let's get into this. Giants start with the ball but do not score. But they do score first, and the Panthers answer right back at a 7-7. Seven 10-7 seven. to seven at halftime. Cardinal uh, Panthers were making it. Oh my god, it's happening too fast. I can't keep up. It is a tie game, 21-21. With just under four minutes to go. Let's keep going forward and see what happens. The Panthers go ahead and make it a seven-point game with two minutes left. Let's see if the Giants can tie this game up. It's third and nine. And now it's fourth and nine. This is a, pa a play where the Giants must convert or the Panthers will win. All right, fourth and nine on the 30-yard line. Daniel Jones must convert this. And he throws. It's com it's incomplete. Oh my goodness! Sterling Shepard had the ball, but then he dropped it after a big hit, and that's gonna be the game. Maybe I mean the Giants do have three timeouts, so it's still possible that they have a chance to do something. So let's go ahead and see what happens. All the Panthers need is a first down. And they don't get a first down. 
And the Giants still have one timeout. All right, the Giants are still in this game. We're gonna go ahead and watch every single play of this potential game tying drive. Here we go, first and 10. From their own 27, Daniel Jones drops back and he throws to Saquon, who breaks a tackle, who breaks another tackle. Gets the first down. They're going to have to make some hurry up here. Here we go. Just on, just at a minute left. Daniel Jones snaps. And he throws another check down to Saquon. Unfortunately, the check downs are not going to make it happen. Second and five from the 43. Daniel Jones starts to scramble and he throws it to Saquon, which is incomplete. To stop the clock. 32 seconds left. And Jones throws. It's complete. He needs to get out of bounds, which he gets a lot more yards before doing so. That was a great play by Wandale Robinson. And now with just 25 seconds left, they only need 31 yards to get a touchdown. Danny Dimes. Throws the ball, and it's tap. Not that blip that it's knocked away. Daniel Jones drops back and he throws complete to his tight end, who's not gonna be able to make it out of bounds. They're gonna have to take their last and timeout with 13 seconds left on the 13 yard line. Cannot get tackled in bounds here. This will be the end of the game. Let's see what happens. Daniel Jones drops back, he stands in the pocket, he throws intercepted. Oh my goodness, it might be a pick six unless Daniel Jones can catch him, which he does. But that doesn't matter. The Panthers have defeated the Giants and will take all of their land and their best player. Let's go ahead and update the map and the roster. And of course, the Panthers are going to steal Miles Garrett from the Giants. And it seems like when one team gains a lot of territory, another team just comes and takes it away from them. We are now down to... Seven teams remaining. Let's see who's next. And it's looking like the Buccaneers are going to get called on. Let's see where they're going to go. Going east. And it looks like they're going to attack the Chargers now. We're going to have the Buccaneers at the Chargers. Let's go. All right, let's get into this Buccaneers at Chargers. The Buccaneers start with the ball, but have a quick drive. But the Chargers come back and score a touchdown. And now it's 14-0. 17-0. And this Buccaneers score at the end of the half. 17-7. Now it's 17-10. 20-10. to Buccaneers make it a seven-point game. And it looks like... Just as I stopped that the Chargers got the ball back with under a minute left. Meaning, unless the, Tamp the, the Buccaneers use all their timeouts and stop them, I don't think there is anything that they can do. Especially if Chargers get this first down, which they do. That'll seal the deal, and the Chargers have beat the Buccaneers. Let's get that updated roster and map. To help out their already stacked receiving core, the Chargers picked up Devontae Adams from the Buccaneers. And here's an update to look at the map. The Cowboys are completely engulfed by the Chargers. And out of all the teams remaining, there's only one team that does not have blue as one of their main colors. That is the Bengals. Let's go ahead and move on. And it looks like the Cowboys are going to get called upon for the first time. And there is not even a point in spinning this arrow. Like we said, they have to play the Chargers. So we're going to have the Cowboys attacking the Chargers. Let's go. Let's get started. Scoreless through the first quarter. The Dallas gets on the four first. 7-3 now. 14-3. 14-10 going. Uh, no, 21 to 10 going in at halftime. 28 to 10 now. Dallas is taking away with this game. 35 17. 
Chargers are running out of time to come back. It is 38-24, and it is over. The Chargers made it close. But, normally this wouldn't be an upset, but in this episode, with the Chargers having as much talent as they do from all the matches they've won, I would say this is an upset. I don't think it was a question. The Cowboys stole Travis Kelsey from the Chargers. Here's an update to look at the map with the five remaining teams. Two of which being the two Texas teams, which is a surprise, I would say. And it looks like the Panthers are getting called upon again. Let's see where they're going to go. And I would say that touches the Cowboys territory. So we're going to have the Ch Panthers attacking the Cowboys for a giant chunk of land. Let's go. Here we go. Panthers at Cowboys. Dallas gets on the board first. The Panthers tie right back up. 7-7. Seven seven. And then Dallas makes it 21-7 right before halftime. It is now 21-10. Now it's 28-10. 30, 38 to 10. Cowboys ran away with this one. And as the theme has been, when a team takes a lot of land, they lose it real quick. And that's what happened to the Panthers. And the Cowboys, after not playing the entire video, they have just acquired almost all of the land in the United States. Let's go ahead and update the roster and the map. And the Cowboys' defense has just become stronger with acquiring Miles Garrett from the Panthers. Here is an updated look at the map. Let's go ahead and get onto our next spin. And it's going to be the Bengals. So I think they can only either expand or play the Cowboys. Let's see what they're going to do. And I think, unfortunately, that is playing the Cowboys, and it is. We have the Bengals attacking the Cowboys. Let's go. Here we go. Bengals have a chance to pull off the big upset, and they are starting it off strong 7 to nothing. But the Cowboys tie it back. Bengals go up 14-7. Now 21-7. 28-7. 28-10 at halftime. Cowboys are starting to make a comeback, but it's 35-24 now. 42-24. The Cowboys have made it an eight-point game. But it looks like the Bengals are about to be able to get a first down to end it. And they do. That is the game. The Bengals have upset the Cowboys. Well, actually, the Cowboys got the ball back and made it very close. Luckily, they didn't score because that would have been... Very crazy. Anyway, the Bengals won. Just took all of the land that the Cowboys just acquired. They're also going to steal a player from the Cowboys. Let's go ahead and see who that's going to be. It was between Miles Garrett and Travis Kelsey, but I think Travis Kelsey just benefited this team more, giving Joe Burrow another receiving threat. All right, and here's an updated look at the map. We have three teams remaining. The good news is the Texans and the Colts cannot play anybody except the Bengals. So if the wheel lands on them, they have to play the Bengals. Let's go ahead and find out what happens next. It looks like the Texans are going to get called upon for the first time in this video. And they have to play the Bengals, who is the reigning powerhouse of this challenge. Texans at Bengals. Let's go. Let's get started. Texans start off with the ball and do not score. Bengals go up 3-0. The Texans are winning 7-3. 14-3. It's 14-10. The Texans go up 17-10. Bengals tie it up. Bengals go up 24-17. And it looks like 
the Texans are on fourth down with a little bit over two minutes left. And of course they have to punt. They can stop the Bengals here. They'll have another chance. And it looks like they will. A quick three and out. Now the Texans are going to start moving this ball. Let's hop into the action here. Here we go. Second and four at the two-minute warning. Davis Mills drops back and throws a pick. I don't even know why I clicked on this game. It's over. It's going to be a pick six. All right. The Bengals have won it, and they will steal a player from the Texas Texans. It is still technically possible that the Texans can win, so we are going to watch it, but it is very unlikely now. We're going to watch this closely and make sure. And another interception by Logan Wilson. He is just ruining the day for the Texans. Now it is officially over. Let's update that map and that roster. And the Bengals went ahead and stole Laramie Tunsil, a great addition to their offensive line here. All right, now that there's only two teams remaining, we are going to spin the wheel one final time. Whichever team it lands on will have home field advantage in the next championship match. This is for the home field advantage for the championship. Let's see. And it's going to be the Colts. So the Bengals do have to go on the road. I don't know if that's going to be enough for the Colts to win. But let's go ahead and find out. I went ahead and made this a Super Bowl matchup. Since it's the championship. But the Colts are the home team here. Let's get into this game. The Bengals start off with the ball. And they make it a 7-0 game. The Colts come back with a field goal. But now it's 14-3. And it's now 21 to 3, 21 to 10, 28 to 10 at halftime. This one is starting to get out of hand, but the Colts make it an 11 point game. 28 17, it's now 35 17, and the Bengals won it with no problem. The Bengals are your Random Imperialism Episode 2 champions. We're going to go ahead and update that map. And the Bengals are your Random Imperialism Episode 2 champions. If you enjoyed that video and you would like to see more of this type of content, please let me know down in the comments. Let me know what kind of power-ups you want to see next, what kind of twists we want. I like changing it up from the regular Imperialism formula. Anyway, it's been Papa John. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next episode.